Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays. I am your host, Paula Taylor, and this is episode 45. I can see my energy tonight, <laughs> and it is like, wah! <laughs> so hopefully I won't get distracted by that. I also have a really strong grid, and it's very throat heavy, and it's interesting as soon as I sat down, my throat kind of started to get a little bit irritated, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. So we'll see what happens tonight. It's always um, it's always a journey. It's always an interesting experience for me because, of course, I have some notes about what I want to say, and then sometimes I just go totally in a different direction, and that's great. It's a good example of the intuitive flow that we're always aiming to get into with this spiritual work. So tonight we're going to talk about broadening our perspective. And the reason I chose this topic for this week is that my sister has been visiting from out of town and we started talking about some of the things that happened to us in our childhood and as we were talking, we realized we had completely different perspectives about the exact same events. And we're not the same age. There's a five-year age difference. And so, of course, that accounts for some of it. But it really got me thinking about our perspective and what forms our perspective. And our perspective is shaped so much by our life experience. It's also shaped by our judgments, which are usually self-judgments. Even if we think they're judgments of others, they're really self-judgments. And so I started thinking about this and, and we really got into a kind of in-depth, like several day long discussion about this, where we kind of kept poking at it a little bit and looking at it a little bit more. And then she told me this story that she gave me permission to share because I think it just illustrates this so well. And, and it kind of segues into what I want to talk about and then what we're going to meditate on. So she told me this story about she and my other sister and how they attended this party when they were, when they were young, when they were kids. And and so her experience was that they went to this party together and she felt like they didn't belong there. She felt like it was a very uncomfortable situation. And so her judgment of the situation was that there was something wrong with her and that's why they didn't belong. And she felt like she had ruined my other sister's experience of this party because there was something wrong with her because she just didn't belong in this situation. And that kind of spiraled into this, this idea that she didn't belong anywhere. And, and as we do, it kind of turned into what Brene Brown might call a shame spiral. And so as she and I were talking about perspective, this story came up and she said, you know, I talked to our other sister about this because I wanted to get her perspective about what had happened at this party. And she had a, unsurprisingly, she had a completely different experience, a, deep, a completely different perspective of the situation. And what she said was that my sister had not ruined the party for her at all. She thought it was a terrible party. She thought they didn't fit in, that they didn't belong there either. But, but rather than kind of internalizing it, her feeling was more like, this is just not the place for us. These are just not our people. And so she didn't have that harsh self-judgment. And then she told my sister, like, I certainly didn't blame you. It was clearly not us. It was clearly just that we weren't resonating on the same frequency to speak my language. That's probably not what she said, but it just wasn't their people. It wasn't their place at that time. And so we thought that was so interesting because her self-judgment about that situation clearly was not really rooted in objective reality. And it's really hard for us to get objective reality because of exactly what I'm talking about. Because everything we view, every situation we go into is filtered through this lens of our experiences and our judgments. And our self-judgments tend to be so harsh and when we judge other people, it tends to be harsh as a reflection of these harsh judgments about ourselves. And so 
when you look at a situation from someone else's perspective, in this situation, my sister was lucky enough to have another person there who seemed like they were a little bit more objective in the situation. She got all this insight about like, oh, all these years I thought, you know, that I had ruined this party for you. And I thought that that it said there was something wrong with me and I didn't belong. And then I started feeling like I didn't belong anywhere. And it, and it kind of led into this whole thing. And of course, my other sister was like, no, it was just a bad party. <laughs> and so that's what I want to talk about tonight. And I thought that was just such a good example because our perspective is so often ego-driven. It's that small, fear-based mind, that personality part of ourselves. And it has such a narrow vision of things. It has this tunneled vision because of these filters I'm talking about. The filters of things that, had ha that have happened to us, and especially traumas. You know, we really see things through the filter of trauma and still we, until we can start to process and release trauma, a lot of the things we see in our present day are seen through this filter of the traumas that we went through in our past. And those traumas trigger these harsh self-judgments. And then we judge ourselves and then we judge others and, and we get narrower and narrower and narrower till all we see is what we're looking for in essence. And so we need to step back from that. We need to broaden our perspective. We need to take that tunneled vision, that tunneled perspective and widen it. And we need to look at things through that lens of a neutral space into that loving view. And we do that by cultivating and activating the observer self that, that I'm always talking about in these Wind Down Wednesdays by cultivating that divine connection that allows us to really be in a neutral loving space rather than in that small, tunneled, narrow, ego, fear-driven view that we, that we tend to have until we can step back, until we can broaden our perspective and, and look at things through eyes of love rather than eyes of fear. So we do this every week. We practice this skill by meditating, by developing that observer self, by strengthening, strengthening our connection to the divine, by looking clearly at our self-judgments, at our harsh judgments of other people that tend to be reflections of the judgments we have about ourselves, and processing that through that spiritual processing technique releasing things from our energy, recognizing where we store our emotions in our physical body. All of that is a, is a lifelong practice. But what do we do when we're in the heat of a moment, when we're in conflict or we're in an uncomfortable situation, like my sister in that party, wondering, you know, what, what do I do here? Am I, oh, is, this is all me. It must be me. So I like to ask the question, what is the highest good in this situation? How can I serve the highest good? And, and what you'll find is that instantly takes you out of that ego-based, that fear-based filter, that pattern of thinking that we've developed from such a young age, and into this broader vision, this broader perspective that is more neutral that is more grounded, that is more connected to that divine flow of energy, to that divine service. This is a question, essentially, how can I be of service in this situation? And the minute, the nanosecond that we place ourselves in service, that script flips and it's no longer about me. It's no longer about that little me, that little ego, you know, what do I do here and, and how can I get out of this situation because it's uncomfortable? Or sometimes if it's an argument, how can I win? I'm right. I know I'm right. I mean, how many times do we get in a situation where you know you're right and the other person's wrong and that little ego self is like, oh, I got to show them, I got to prove it. And the minute you can step out of that and, and into that 
what is the highest good here? How can I serve the highest good? The minute you you change that viewpoint into a service viewpoint, all of those little concerns suddenly seem so trivial and you start to get a broader picture and you start to think about things in a different way. We actually, we went to lunch today and we were pulling out of the parking lot and the car in front of us was waiting to turn right, but they were waiting to turn right into the left turn lane. And my sister was trying to get out of town. She had somewhere to be and we were kind of pushing it time-wise. So I was feeling some pressure. I wanted to get her back to the house so she could get her stuff in her car and go home. And the the left turn lane was backed up like like you couldn't even see. And and I'm like, person, just turn and then turn around. You know, I was getting more and more frustrated. And in that ego-minded, you know, what are you doing? And and I'm right, get out of my way. You're never gonna get into this line of cars. I was really getting <laughs> and she was kind of laughing at me because I was like, I've worked so hard on my road rage. Like you're bringing it out in me. And then, and, and of course that's not true at all. But she said to me, you don't know what this person's day has been like. Be kind to them, be nice to them. And, and instantly, you know, it's like, oh, wait a minute. What is the highest good in this situation? How can I be of service? And that little tunnel vision, I got to get her home, blah, 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 like opens back up. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. This isn't that big of a deal. Maybe we waited an extra three or four minutes. But in the grand scheme of things, she still made it to where she needed to be in time. Everybody got there safely. So in the heat of the moment, it can be so hard not to stay in that place. And, and there's a reward there. There's a that, you know, I'm right voice is one of the most rewarding, not in a good way, but it rewards the ego, that fear-based me, 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 me part of us that's like, I'm right, this is for me, you know, where we think people are out to get us or we're judging other people because we're judging ourselves. Stepping out of that can be really difficult, but asking that simple question, what is the highest good in this situation? How can I serve the highest good? It takes that little me completely out of the picture and it gives us a big I. So instead of the little me of the ego, what's in this for me? That's what the ego says. Or how do I get out of this situation because it's uncomfortable? I'm scared. A lot of times that's what the ego says. This is the giant I, that giant I of spirit, that giant I of divine energy that we call on that is our true nature, that is our true spiritual self that pulls us out of that little ego mind and back away from that tunneled vision and we back up and suddenly see and our vision softens and we start to recognize beauty and we start to call in gratitude. And then the experience actually shifts for that personality self, for that ego self. Ironically, if we can get out of the ego self, then that fear, all of that little ugh that's going on, ha, ah, that can dissipate. We can let that go. We can step back into flow and service. And ultimately, that actually serves our personality. That serves what we're here to do on this physical plane, which is to be in service in whatever form that shows up for us. So tonight for the meditation, I had a couple of different ideas and I'm interested to see which way we go because as I say, this is always an intuitive practice, but I want to say one more thing about the idea that the judgments we have about ourselves tend to be harsh. And the judgments we have about other people tend to be an extension or a reflection of those harsh judgments we have about ourselves. And it's the same thing. If we can step back to a broader view, I was trying to make the video for this morning's post and I couldn't find what I was looking for exactly. What I really wanted was 
I wanted something that was so close up you couldn't tell what it was. It was just a blurry mess. Like when you get your camera so close that, you know, if I put my hand all the way to the camera, it's just like, what is that? And then all of a sudden you back up and I wanted it to back so far away that we were looking at the beautiful earth from space, which I'm sure everybody has seen a picture of. And, and every time I see a picture of the earth from space, something inside my body loosens because it's that broader perspective. It's that idea that we are here to serve a greater purpose that has nothing to do with that tunneled vision that we sometimes get so focused on. And I think that's what we're going to be doing in our meditation tonight. So let's meditate together now. <sighs> Let yourself grow heavy. Find a comfortable position for your body, whatever that position is tonight. I encourage you to sit up if you can to help stay awake. But if you're more comfortable lying down, that's fine too. Be really gentle with yourself in this meditation. Remember that you are in a safe space, that you are practicing with other people who are holding that safe space for you. And right now, just let that safe space envelop you. Feel that warmth, that coziness, like you're in your favorite chair wrapped in a blanket looking out the window at a storm or a blizzard and just feeling so cozy and safe in your sanctuary. We've already drawn that sanctuary to us. Everything that happens from here on in is completely safe. Any emotions that come up can be easily let go of in whatever way they show up. Deepen your breath as those emotions float to the surface and sigh it out with the intention to release if that comes up for you tonight. Take three nice deep oxytocin breaths, breathing in through the nose, drawing the belly out and then sighing that breath out with an audible ha sound. Ah. Ooh. You can add that grounding oomph at the end as I just did. Just feeling very safe, very secure, very grounded here. And as we always do, gently allow the top of the head, that crown chakra to open, call in that divine energy, that energy of love and service. Let it come in through the top of your head and your face, your jaw and throat, your shoulders and arms, elbows, wrists and hands. Draw that beautiful golden light in through your chest and upper back to the abdomen and mid back, the low back and low belly. Let this energy of divine service flow into your hips and your pelvis. Let it come into each thigh and down to your knees. Take another nice deep breath, draw that energy all the way in through the top of the head and the torso and the hips into the knees. And then as you sigh it out, blow that energy down the lower legs into the ankles and feet. Allow yourself to feel very anchored here. Feel your feet supported by the earth, feel the energy of the earth coming up into your feet, that rich, fertile soil here to support you in your path of divine service. And once again, draw your energetic sanctuary to you here. If you're not familiar with what that is, 
just imagine that you're now sitting in the most beautiful, the safest place you've ever been. This is your special space you can come to. No one else can enter this space without your permission. And anything that happens in this space is completely safe. You are supported here. You are cared for here. You are loved in this space, just as you are in every other space that you occupy. And notice now in your space that there's a beautiful mirror in front of you, a full length mirror. Notice what the mirror looks like. Notice if there's any details. Kind of a frame is it in? Is it just a simple mirror? Let yourself just look at the mirror before you look in it. And as you're ready, step right up to this mirror, very, very close. And look at yourself in the mirror. And I want you to notice here as you're looking in the mirror, Notice the judgments that you have about yourself. Start with your physical body. Notice the things you don't like about your physical body in this mirror. And remember, this is a safe space. So any emotions that come up, let them come up. Let yourself breathe through them. If you need to take a break, you can step away from the mirror. But do come back and really look in the mirror here. Really see what the harsh judgments you have about your physical body are. Perhaps they're even exaggerated. It's almost like a funhouse mirror, and all you can see are those things that you don't like about yourself. And keep breathing through any discomfort here, stepping away, taking a break if you need to. But as you're ready, now I want you to look closer in the mirror. And notice any of the things that aren't physical, any of the judgments you have about yourself, the things you don't like about yourself that are within your body, the personality traits that you don't care for. Perhaps it's the way you treat other people. Perhaps it's the way you treat yourself. Again, breathing through discomfort, letting yourself express emotion as you need to really looking closely here. And again, this mirror may be a complete distortion. If all you're looking at are your judgments, it is a distortion, but let it be that way for a few moments. Let the words come to your mind of the things that are too much about you or the things that are not enough about you. Let this really come into your view in the mirror here. And again, keep breathing as you need to. You can use sound to release energy that's coming up. You can take a break and walk away if you need to and come back to this when you feel like you're ready. But notice now all of a sudden the mirror has extended. It's gotten wider. And in the mirror now, notice that there are other people from your life standing with you. And notice now the judgments you have about them or the reflection of your own judgments that you see reflected by them. Maybe it's the physical things you don't like about yourself. Maybe it's something about someone that just annoys you. See that in the mirror now, reflected in the person's reflection, in a family member, a friend. It can be multiple people. Whatever you see here, let it come to you intuitively. And again, breathe through this. This may be very uncomfortable for you. And if you're having a hard time with the visualization, just let go of that and, and let your thoughts guide you. You don't have to actually see a mirror. You don't have to actually see people. Just think about 
those judgments you make about yourself, the things about yourself that you don't like, and the things about other people that you don't like, the things that bother you in your friends and your family members, in the people you encounter in your daily life. And you might be feeling really yucky now. This is a hard exercise and it's an uncomfortable exercise. And we're really tunneling in. We're really illustrating that idea of that tunneled vision of only seeing the negative, of only seeing the things that make us uncomfortable or the things that we don't like. And stick with that for just another moment or two here. Don't worry, it's going to get better, but really let yourself see those things. And then now all of a sudden notice Almost as if you're being drawn by an unseen hand. You've taken a few steps back. And you can't see those things quite as well now. Those judgments, the things about yourself you don't like. You just can't see them as much. You've, you've gotten some distance from the mirror. And then take a few more steps back. Let yourself be drawn back away from this mirror. and drawn back even further. And all of a sudden, you're so far away from the mirror that all you see is kind of a, a broad outline of yourself, a broad outline of these other people. And all of a sudden, notice in this space, in this broad view, in this distanced view, notice how beautiful it is. It's a piece of art here. All of these beautiful silhouettes None of them are different. You can't see the details well enough to even see facial features, to see who's who. At this point, you're not even sure which one you are because you're all one continuous, beautiful work of art here. Some color, some light. Notice all the light that you see as you step away. So much more light coming into this mirror, coming into this reflection. And you see this beautiful outline like a halo around each person and connecting each person in this mirror. This beautiful light, these beautiful colors. And you can no longer see those things that you don't like about yourself physically, emotionally, socially. It's all gone. You can't see well enough to see any of that because you're so far away. You just see this beauty. It's like an impressionistic painting. You're just seeing this beautiful color, this beautiful work of art. You can't quite make out what it is because you've gotten so far away that it's just blurry. It's just smudged. It's just beautiful color and light. And look at all the people with you here and notice you can't see the things about them anymore either. You can't see any of those little day-to-day -day details that get on your nerves about your partner, about the person you live with. You can't see the little things about your coworkers or your boss that drive you crazy. You can't see the person in traffic that made you angry earlier today. All you see is this continuous, beautiful color, the reflection of these divine beings the divine being that you are, the divine beings that come into your life to reflect this beauty for you. So much light coming into this mirror now. It's almost blinding. Maybe you even need to step a few steps further back. And now all you see is light. Just beautiful light in this mirror. Just the beautiful light of all of these souls of all of these divine beings shining into the mirror and reflecting back. There's no room for anything else when you look from this far away. When you take this divine view, all you see is beauty. All you see is light. All you see is the softening of the harsh edges that we see when we're up close. There's no lines on anyone's face. You can't see the shape of their body anymore or their color. Everyone is just light. And any of the judgments you may have had about any of those things, 
in this light seems so unimportant. Look at the beauty. Look at this radiant light shining forth from each one of these people. From your own being. This beautiful light reflecting back to you. Such an awe-inspiring sight. Light and beauty and color and softness. And let gratitude come in here for the last few moments of this. Let yourself feel grateful for being able to step back out of that tunneled vision, even if it's just for a few moments in, in one day. Because this broadening is accessible all of the time. We just need to step back and remember that we are divine. Everyone is divine. And those judgments don't matter in this radiant light of unconditional love. <sighs> Let this radiant light fill your body. Let it fill the bodies of all the people you've ever encountered, the people in your inner circle that you love so much, the people that you don't know as well, the people that you've never even met, but very briefly. Let this light spread. Step back even further from the mirror. Step back so far that all you see is light. Beautiful golden light flowing into you, flowing into everyone around you. And let this light flow out of you as well as it's drawn into you. Send this light back out into the universe. Send it to the people standing next to you in the mirror. And send it beyond that. Send it to all the people you've ever met, even briefly. Send it to your ancestors who came before you. Send it to your descendants who will come later. Send it to the future occupants of this planet. Send it to the planet itself. Send this light, this divine radiance, letting it flow through the head and out, back into the universe. And recognize that you are a being of light. There are no flaws in this light. There are no judgments in this light. You are this light. Let yourself step very slowly back toward the mirror and notice that all you see now is light in yourself, in the people around you. 
no matter how close you get in this moment. All is light, all is beauty, all is love. As you're ready, you can release that mirror. You can release your sanctuary, your energetic safe space. And let yourself just sit for a moment back in your body, in the room. And notice that you're carrying that light with you. It hasn't left with the meditation. It's always within you. It's always around you. It's always accessible to you. It's always within everyone you encounter. Set the intention to continue to broaden your perspective, especially in those difficult moments, asking, what is the highest good in this situation? How can I serve the highest good? And affirm with me out loud, I am fully present in my body. I am fully present in my body and I am a being of radiant light. I am fully present in my physical body and everyone I encounter is a being of radiant light. Oh. As you're ready, take another two or three deep breaths, sigh them out, add that grounding oomph at the bottom if you'd like. Slowly begin to move your physical body, maybe moving your fingers, your wrists, cracking your ankles, move your head around gently, maybe shrug your shoulders. Just gently coming back fully into the space you're in. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Let yourself broaden your perspective and be gentle with yourself about this. As usual, it's a process, but use that question. What is the highest good in this situation? And how can I serve the highest good? And you will find that broadness coming more and more frequently. Have a beautiful rest of your night. Have a broad rest of your week, and I will see you next week for Wind Down Wednesday. <laughs>